This is a presentation of other layer two features in the Compass Network Design and Operations Workshop. So we're going to look at a list of other layer two features, including link aggregation, rapid spanning tree, multiple spanning tree, and some switch configuration advice for network management and documentation. Link aggregation. This is also known as port bundling or link bundling. And in this case, you have multiple links in parallel as a single logical link. You do it for two main reasons. One is increased capacity, and the second one is for redundancy or some sort of fault tolerance. LACP, which is the Link Aggregation Control Protocol, is a standardized method of negotiating these bundled links between switches. It's an IEEE standard 802.1AX, uh, previously 802.3AD. There are also other proprietary methods of doing link aggregation. Cisco has PAGP as well as Ether Channel. Juniper has aggregated Ethernet. Most of the other switch vendors have some proprietary method. The standardized method will work between different vendors and the proprietary methods only work when you have the same vendor on both sides. So let us see how it works. Two switches connected via multiple links will start sending LSE PDU packets identifying themselves and the port capabilities. They will then automatically try and build the logical aggregated links and then start passing traffic. Switch ports can be configured as active or passive. If it's active, it means it will always send LSE PDUs. If it is passive, then it will only send an LSE PDU after it, uh, after it has received an LSE PDU packet. This was added to try and avoid certain loop um, conditions, but you usually need to have at least one side configured as active. Since LSEP is standards-based, some software implementations exist which allow Linux and the different BSDs to combine ports as well. So you can have a server connected to a switch and you have multiple ports. Things that require more bandwidth than just one physical port can provide, for example, your NAS servers or your database servers or your backup servers. You could bundle different um, ports to get the higher aggregated throughput and you have a Linux server on one side or a FreeBSD server on one side and a switch on the other. But let's go back to the LSEP operation. In this diagram, we have two switches, switch A and switch B, and they are both connected with two 100 Mbps links. So they'll start sending LSEPDUs across these links. Both ports are on, and when they start selling the LSEPDUs, they will negotiate how to set up the aggregation. The result is an aggregated 200 Mbps logical link. So it's also fault tolerant. So if one of the link breaks, um, you don't lose the entire bundle. It will now drop to 100 Mbps. And it will keep sending traffic over the remaining link. If it gets fixed, then it will bump up the traffic. And it's not limited to two links. You can have three, four, five. Usually the maximum is about eight. Now, the traffic across the bundled links are distributed by using a hashing algorithm on the frames. And it will be based on different criteria like the source and or destination MAC address, the source and or destination IP address, and the source and destination port numbers. Your choice of which different parts go into the hashing algorithm will affect, could create an unbalanced use of the link such that they prefer one link over the other, depending on the nature of the traffic. So you should always choose a load balancing method that provides the most distribution. And it will be based on understanding the kind of traffic that is going between these two switches. 
Is it from many sources to many destinations? Is it from one source to many destinations? Um, for example, if you're doing this to a Linux server that is a NAS machine, then you know that on the other side, there will always be two MAC addresses, but the same IP because it's going to the same physical um, Linux server. So understanding the traffic will let you pick a load balancing method that works for you.